Barricades, soldiers and checkpoints. They don't just separate the Palestinian territories from Israel. Here in the West Bank, they also split the city of Hebron. Is it OK in Qatar? Apparently, it's not. I'm with Sundus, a Palestinian student who lives on the other side of this checkpoint, right by a Jewish settlement. We know the rules more than you, we know. OK, where are you living? There. Where? We go straight then left. Which family? Azza. Shparat Azza? Mm -hmm. And this is your friend? Yeah. You want to go to your house? Yeah, to my house. Before we do something, we tell the Hamal and the Basis everything. OK. But you see, you we know? have guns. We have guns. We have guns here. I don't uh, tell you have a gun and you. No, no, but what is the, just tell me what the problem is. Like, why wouldn't you want me to go there? Security reason. <laughs> the soldiers are here to protect Israeli settlers from attacks. And from okay. us, too, I guess. Is OK? No. Excuse me, it's not my job to call them attack or to, to call anyone from Israeli government, OK? You want your friends to go there? You have to do something. You have to do something. He's the commander, he can do something. Yeah, it's not my business. not my business. No, she can. OK, you want me to pass the phone uh, to the commander who told me to call you? I don't know who is. I think I think he I don't speaks know, but Arab. He do, I don't know if he speaks Hebrew. He speaks Hebrew. There is a settlement, and the, for me, I have the permission to go there. And anyone, at, you know, I have a lot of uh, visitors. They came from okay. here. They passed from this street, and it was no problem. There is no problem for special journalists as international. It's not. It's allowed to them to to be anywhere they want. So it's, it's a little bit like I don't know. So why do you think they're doing it? This is, I don't know, some soldiers really, it depends to their moods. Some soldiers, they said, OK, it's, it's our job, we have to do it, but I still don't know. So what did he say? Who was that now? He's from the Matak. Okay. okay. The Matak is responsible for uh, the communication yes. between us and the Palestinians. Basically, there was a misunderstanding. No comment. <laughs> So we get to go now. Yes, okay. you can go. Uh, I'm sorry for the inconvenience and okay. everything, but uh, you know the procedure is is complicated a little bit. In this Jewish-Israeli settlement in Hebron, avoidance is the name of the game. No one has a problem with me using the roads. But Sundus, who lives here, isn't allowed to, because she's Palestinian. This is the path she takes to get home. Today, two Israeli acquaintances are visiting from Tel Aviv. Besides the settlers, not many Jewish Israelis come here. For the guests, it's a two-hour drive into an unfamiliar world. So these are actually the settlements? Yeah, here's the settlement. Yeah. Sundus's neighbor is a well-known right-wing nationalist politician. Conflict here seems pretty much unavoidable. First time he threw stones and we were here. I, second time I was here and uh, I took the stone here. And the third time we were there, but uh, and he was here, so he threw stones there, but no one like injured. Here, injured. Mm -hmm. Do you appreciate? Uh, Israeli people coming over here. Yeah, uh, it's really nice to, because it's completely different between Israelis and Israeli settlers. Be careful because Jewish, it's, it's not like these people, you know. Do you think that um, by building up the yeah. wall, the separation yeah. wall between, um, between the two sides, mm -hmm. the green line, yeah. does that make it worse? The world is there because uh, before that there was, uh, you know, a suicide bomber every every other month. I just think that uh, this is good for putting out a fire, but it's not. It's far from being a long-term solution. It's only, uh, you know, aggregating uh, bitterness and uh, and anger, and you know, no, no wonder we are, uh, you know, experiencing what we are experiencing.
Sundas gives tours to visitors from other countries, telling them her side of the story. A story of the ongoing struggle between Palestinians and settlers, where tensions regularly end in violence, perpetrated by both sides. A settler woman, she catch my brother, he took a big stone and she tried to, to put the stone inside his mouth, but luckily he closed his teeth and she only crushed his teeth, which is like, uh, soldiers, Israeli soldiers came and saw what happened and they saw exactly w what the settler woman made to my brother. Uh, luckily, the, when it, uh, the court happened, the soldier told, uh, told the court the truth. Do you think there's anything that we can do as like people from Europe? I was in Europe and I sometimes I I heard from a lot of people, like, they asked me where I'm from, so I said Palestine, so they said, what? Where is Palestine? So this is really big problem for me, and it's really hard. The 22-year-old acts as a kind of ambassador, whether or not she even has a country. Sundas identifies very much with her culture although sometimes she'd prefer not to wear her headscarf. But the people in the Arab part of Hebron are quite conservative. Nonetheless, she'd rather live there than in the Jewish settlement. But that's not an option for her family. The house where they live belongs to relatives, and they don't want to leave it to settlers. She wants to show me around Hebron's ancient city centre. To get there, we have to go through another checkpoint. One of around 20 here. Sundas passes through them several times a day on her way to university, to the shops. Whenever she wants to go anywhere. 200,000 people live in Hebron, making it the biggest city in the West Bank. It's also the only one with Jewish settlements at the center of town. This place, the tomb of Abraham, makes it a holy city for both Jews and Muslims. Thousands of Israeli soldiers are stationed here to protect around 600 Jewish settlers. Unrest here is commonplace. The city is witness to attacks, riots and murders on both sides, some incredibly heinous acts. The uh, Palestinian Buddhist fence also to protect uh, themselves from uh, settlers' stones. Mm -hmm. Of course, it doesn't, it doesn't uh, protect them from uh, dirty water. And also, uh, they throw like uh, chemical water. Really? Yeah. This was once the busiest street in the city. That's before it was blocked off for the settlers. And more than 1,800 Palestinian shops were shut down. Sundas isn't allowed to come here, but I am. And I want to talk to the settlers. No, I don't know English. No. You know what I was asking? Uh, what did you want to uh, ask? <laughs> you can't. You don't speak English. No. <laughs> you do? You just no. answer English. <laughs> <laughs> you don't speak English. Finally, this student from a religious no. school agrees to talk to me. Problem, uh, we have to take uh, arm, uh, guns with us. You have to take guns with you? Yes. Why? Yes. Because it's uh, dangerous. Look, I believe that the, this country is it's our country for a thousand years. I believe that God gave it, gave it to Abraham. It's ours. Have you also heard of settlers attacking Palestinians? We. Oui. No, not we you, but them. there are some who do Here, that. Not at all. Here now, if uh, some Palestinians attack me, so I defend myself. But uh, we don't, uh, we don't fight them at all. You think they want us here? You think they want peace? I think it's uh, complicated. Sadly, the longer I'm here and the more I talk to people on both sides, the less hope I have that this conflict will ever end. The wall between Israel and the West Bank stretches more than 700 kilometers, and its construction is nowhere near complete. Hello. 
Right behind this wall is Jerusalem. Sundas has family there. But to visit them, she needs special permission. And that is not easy to get. Do you think if this wall would not exist anymore, that would change anything? First, we are under occupation. And if there's no wall, Israeli government will put uh, more and more checkpoints. So in my opinion, I don't think so that it, uh, it will change anything. I'd like to, to be free in my land, to go anywhere I want without any checkpoint, without any permissions. But of course, we we are all optimistic. We, we are patient also. So yeah, I hope. So something will change in the future, I don't know. Change is a big word in Israel and the West Bank, where religion and politics have created huge walls that cut through the land, and worse still, through people's hearts and minds.